This is the Quiet Cat Lynx. The brand is best known for their overlanding and hunting e-bikes, but this moto looking ride attempts to better blend off-road and street riding. So how does it handle life both on the road and in the dirt? You'll find out in this review. Before we get things started, just a reminder that liking and subscribing go a long way into helping us bring you reviews of the latest e-bikes and we appreciate the support from our audience. Now, the Lynx here is a very interesting bike that will surely have a lot of people doing a double take. You'd be forgiven if you thought this was a motorcycle at first glance. We've tested a lot of moto style e-bikes, especially over the last year, but few have a design approach that leans into the motorcycle elements quite as much as the Lynx does. After testing this bike out over the last several weeks, there was a lot that stood out to us when it comes to the features of the Lynx. First off, it's comfort. There is a lot of spec here that adds up to a pretty nice riding experience. It has a full suspension design. There's an inverted KKE spring fork with a listed 203 millimeters of travel, a 210 by 50 millimeter rear suspension, also from KKE, and you also get large tires with the V Mission Control 24 by four inch wide tire. Throw in the elongated saddle with two different riding positions or potentially room for a plus one, I suppose. And you have what felt like a really comfortable experience with the caveat of if you're tall enough to ride it. The Lynx comes in just one size and I measured the lower part of the saddle at a 32 inch standover height. It also weighs over 100 pounds, so it might not be the best for smaller and lighter riders, but the sizing felt really great to me. The next standout element of the bike was its versatile nature. The bike neither looks nor feels out of place riding it down the road or on some hard packed dirt. The same features that added to its comfort also handle well, allowing you to take this bike across wide open dirt roads like the OHV areas where we rode it on or enjoy a simple ride at a brisk pace when going around town. And with Quiet Cat's emphasis on their VPO settings, you can easily toggle the bike's class settings for compliance wherever you're riding with access to one, two, three, or unlocked settings to help control your top speed. Finally, Quiet Cat even has a pretty handy app with a lot of nice features. Those include GPS monitoring, ride tracking, remote lock and unlock, and even maintenance reminders. A little more control over your ride is always a welcome sight on an e-bike. So while those features stood out the most to me, let's run through the rest of what the Lynx is packing. Now the motor is a cadence sensor operated Bafang two speed thousand watt hub. Similar to a rear cassette, the motor can sort of internally change gears automatically to deliver efficiency when not riding hard and up the power when needed. The Lynx includes a 48 volt 20 amp hour or 960 watt hour removable battery and the whole electrical system is in accordance with UL2849. There are some Quiet Cat branded two piston hydraulic disc brakes with large 203 millimeter rotors, while their website lists them as being made by Gemma. The drivetrain is a simple single speed with a 46 tooth uh, chain ring up front and 16 tooth in the rear. Now let's take a look at the cockpit. There's a BMX style bar with good width for all your controls. There are lock on rubber grips on either side. And then over here on the left side, it features an electric horn and controls for the high and low beam of the very large front halo light. Now your uh, pedal assist, your walk assist and power buttons are also over here on the left. And on the right side, it features the twist grip throttle. Now in the middle of the handlebar, there's a color display that's easy to see showing you your speed, motor output, class settings and battery life. Also, there are included fenders an integrated tail light, and a short rear rack with a 55 pound capacity. And that goes with some handy accessories like waterproof bags or other cargo accessories Quiet Cat has on their website. Now Quiet Cat is a brand that's known for carrying a whole bunch of useful items from game trailers to solar chargers for your battery and even more. So make sure to check out all the options from our pricing link down below, which also supports the channel should you buy. Now, last but not least, 
The Lynx comes in either our onyx black, or there's also a silver looking alloy option as well. So starting off our tests, we checked the effectiveness of the Lynx's brakes. Now I rode this bike up to 20 miles per hour, stopped quickly, and measured the distance it took to stop. After three attempts to get an average, the Lynx stopped at 22 feet and seven inches. Now this is longer than most moped style e-bikes we have tested. The current average as of this recording is 20 feet and 10 inches from that class, but the result is still within safe parameters and better than I was expecting to be completely honest. The Lynx has the distinction of being one of the heaviest e-bikes we've tested, weighing in at 103 pounds. Overall, I think the brake system did a good job of slowing the bike down and holding the speed in check, and there weren't any surprises anytime I hit the brakes across all the miles that I logged on the Lynx. Reliability is key with this test, and so the Lynx gets a pass from us here. Let's head out on a ride so we can find out the speeds that the bike is capable of when riding it around in either class two or class three settings. All right, so this is the class two speed test of the Quiet Cat Lynx. Somewhat curiously, it, I can't have the bike on and ride without the motor going. It's kind of got this walk assist icon here, but as I pedal, it seems to kick the bike on. So uh, as of right now, it's going about nine and a half miles per hour, feeling the weight of this 100 pound e-bike, but eco mode has kicked on for us. So we'll see where we get up to. Um, Again, the point of our speed test, we're going to soft pedal here. We're more interested to see what speeds the motor produces. Uh, we do have the torque sensor, which you can toggle on or off on this bike. We do have that engaged right now. But as you can see, at a soft pedal, I mean, I'm going to go upwards of the about 19.2 mile per hour, really close to that 20 mile per hour limit. We'll bump it up into, we're going from eco to trail mode. And I'm hitting 20.3 miles per hour, kind of dancing around between 20 and 20.3. And then in boost, I wanted to give me a little bit of a surge, pushing upwards to 20.7 miles per hour, um, but not letting me go much further beyond that. So, I mean, overall, any of these settings are gonna hit about 20 miles per hour, even on a very soft casual pedal. Um, I think the biggest difference is in acceleration that I have felt just in my casual testing. But let's see how things work in the class three setting. All right, we've got things switched over to class three settings now on the Lynx. So we're gonna see kind of what the speed profile looks like when we increase that top uh, speed up to 20 miles per hour. So same thing here, I am just soft pedaling in, in eco mode and it just kind of keeps steadily climbing. And I don't know if you can see the power gauge read out there, but it's about two thirds of pushing its max power. And as I get to about 21.3 miles per hour here, I think it's gonna rest close to about 21. I'm gonna just switch it over to trail mode. And then the acceleration actually feels good. I think it actually accelerates pretty hard. Just given the size and weight of the bike, it actually feels proportionate. Like everything feels very well tuned in terms of how quickly this bike will pick up. So as we go a little bit closer, as you can see, it just kind of keeps steadily climbing up to about 26 miles per hour, dancing around that line. So we'll push it up into boost mode, see where we kind of go from there. So now it's pushing maximum power, all of its available wattage. You get upwards into the 27 mile per hour range, up to 27.3. See if it gets any faster before I lose speed into that final bend there, but yeah, right up there to 28 miles per hour. So even for a heavier bike, I mean, this thing will definitely climb up into those faster class three speeds. So let's talk a little bit more uh, in studio. Actually, first let's do a throttle test and see how quickly it goes from zero to 20 there. All right, so this is the throttle acceleration test for the Quiet Cat Lynx. On your mark, get set. Go! And starts you off pretty good and controllable pace. Does a good job of not, I mean, it just keeps ramping up and going. Doesn't seem to struggle as it gets to higher speeds at all. There you go. 20 miles per hour, so overall pretty good movement. Okay, so as you saw from the test, all the results were pretty quick, but let's recap what those were exactly. So with no motor, the bike was moving at 9.7 miles per hour. Honestly, it pedaled more easily than I would have guessed for a single speed drivetrain on such a heavy bike, but still not what I'd call fun either. So in class two settings, the bike went 19.2 miles per hour in eco mode, 
20.3 in trail and 20.7 in boost. Then when we switch things over to class three, those speeds increase to 21.5 miles per hour in eco, 26.1 miles per hour in trail, and then it topped out at 27.9 miles per hour in boost. So I'll point out the obvious here. Speeds are a bit clustered and on a flat riding area like what I was on, you'll eventually reach virtually the same top speed with even a soft pedal effort. That's something Quiet Cat could improve on. Ordinarily, I don't place a lot of emphasis on the pedal experience for a moped style e-bike. They're known for heavy throttle usage, but the sizing of the links is large enough that it actually pedals decently for this style of bike. And it would be nice to have those speeds spread out a little more should you ever want to slow it down. The spacing was only slightly better on the class three test, but could still use a little work there too. There is a redeeming factor here though. The power certainly felt different at each level in regard to hill climbs. Each higher level seemed to give you a bit more power up the hills when pedaling, so that was nice to see. On one final note, the two-speed Bafang hub motor that the Lynx uses is something I could occasionally feel as it shifted. It almost felt like the type of lag you sometimes come across on a mid-drive motor with a torque sensor when you start really pushing harder and the motor hasn't increased the output yet based off your personal torque. It's nothing that really hindered the ride for me as it was only there for a brief second, but it's something you can notice. So to wrap up this test, I'll just summarize all the points. Speed differentiation could definitely be improved upon when pedaling, but it certainly hits higher speeds at a controlled level of acceleration, and it's easy to handle overall. With all the different motor and battery combos out there, the best way to know your range is to test it out, which is exactly what we did with the Lynx. Now we like to establish a ballpark floor and ceiling value that you can expect when riding around. So we test the bike in its highest and lowest power setting, and to be good citizens on our local bike paths, we kept things to a class two speed limit of 20 miles per hour. Now across our two tests, the Lynx went 24.62 miles on max power and 36.75 miles while in eco mode. Honestly, that's pretty solid result, all things considered. With the motor and battery pairing, our data suggests it should go for a little under an hour in max PAS, but he was able to go an hour and 17 minutes, so that was better than expected. Also, considering how close the speed test results were, I frankly expected a lower result in eco mode. So getting an additional 12 miles more than the max test was better than expected. You can likely chalk the overall difference up to the amount of power it was lending on hills, coupled with a slightly lower overall average speed. Now, given everything I know about this bike, I'd say this is a solid result. Both distances were on the low side compared to other moto style e-bikes with similar size motors and batteries, but this was also the heaviest e-bike of the group with some of the widest tires. So when you take in all the factors, I think it was about what I expected. If you are range conscious in any way though, there's always that solar panel charger that I mentioned before, or you can also pick up a spare battery to swap out as well. High on many people's priorities is the question of, will this e-bike make life easier for me on hills? Now to get better insight on that, I'll pass you over to our dedicated hill tester, Justin, who went to our usual test site out at Hellhole to test what it could do up a third mile hill with a 12% grade. All right, here we're on, Hell on Hellhole with the Quiet Cat Lynx doing the throttle only test. It's got the Bafang rear hub motor, 1,000 watt, out um, 1000 watt output, so, We'll see how it does. So far through this first section, going down 10, nine miles per hour. Um, have decent hopes given this, given the rear hub motor, but it is a very heavy bike, this motor, moped style. Um, so doing pretty good. So far, right about eight miles per hour through that stretch, down to 7.9. But yeah, it's kind of holding right there along eight. The motor, you can hear, like I would expect for a thousand watt rear hub motor, it's a little on the lower end of the tone. I'll let you listen to it through this next section. Um, and we'll see how it does through this last punchy climb, but I don't think we're gonna have an issue making it up hell hole. Right, so drop down about seven miles per hour through that section. You could hear the motor got a little kind of lower pitched as it, it started to climb. And then as you get going faster, you hear the higher pitch of the, of the motor kick in. I, I'd say it's right about average. Um, 
on that. And overall, yeah, definitely can cl climb something like Hellhole without pedaling at all. Just using the throttle, which is what you want to do on this bike. And we'll see what the results come in at. Okay, we are back doing the pedal test for the Quiet Lynx. And this is a single gear kind of moped style e-bike, which is to tell you the truth, my least favorite to do on a hellhole. You just don't get great leg extension. So there's always a good test. We'll see how it does. Um, I don't, I'm not pedaling too hard. I'm gonna try not to have to pedal. That's the goal here. Um, to that first section, it's not bad at all. Um, I'm not able to pedal fast. Brought down to about 8.9 9 miles an hour. Motor sounds about the same as it did before. Um, and it just, it does feel like it's got, like I want to pedal faster, but I don't need to. So it feels a little unnatural if you're used to climbing hills on bikes. Um, so yeah, this, this section. Yeah, so I can definitely push harder if I want. But I'm finding that it's best if you don't. If you just kind of let it go and pedal at the pace that the motor wants you to, it's got enough kind of torque, even though you don't have a good cadence, it's still giving me enough power to climb up this. Um, I think it'll be a little faster than the throttle only. We'll, we'll kind of see when we get and, you know, check the tape. But recommendation, you'll end up throttling up most stuff like this, but you can pedal if you need to. Um, yeah, so let's check the results. The Lynx was able to make it up the hill in the throttle test with a time of a minute and 38 seconds with an average speed of 11.1 .1 miles per hour. And with a little pedal effort, it shaved off the time just slightly, going up in a minute 30 with a 12.1 .1 mile per hour average. Now across the more than 150 official tests Justin has recorded on that hill, those times are basically both right around the middle of the pack, and that's not a bad place to be. The 83 newton meters of torque from the motor allows for steady and easy climbs. Now, the recent wave of Quiet Cat models that we've had to, in to test don't fly up the hills like they have in the past, but they get the job done and have pretty steady control along the way. Now, as I've mentioned before, the two-speed motor will automatically do its thing in the background. And just as we could feel it for a brief second on flats, we could sometimes feel vibrations too when running the throttle up steeper hills. It went away with just briefly easing up on the throttle though, so it wasn't much more than a quirk to us, but just something that we noticed. Bottom line, the bike has enough power to get you up most any steep at a decent pace, and the three different modes to choose from in the PAS settings is most used on hills, helping you get a little or a good amount of help. So let's take one final spin so I can help paint the picture of what it's like just riding around on the links. So I feel like the quality of the Lynx is actually one of my favorite Quiet Cat bikes that I've ridden to date. Um, for me, it's one of the most comfortable, it's kind of the most natural, and I just, there's no other way to say it. I feel cool when I ride it. So for whatever that is worth, <laughs> however much that weighs in your quality factor, I mean, that's definitely present. So, I mean, this is a quintessential Cafe Cruiser styled e-bike. We've had a lot of moped e-bikes come through our doors that try to capture that, but none of them I think went as, <laughs> big as the Lynx is. I mean, it's just a very large, full-on motorcycle-esque uh, bike where a lot of others were a little bit more compact, a little bit more e-bike. Um, but I mean, this one spares no expense. It makes it, you feel larger than life when riding it. So it's, again, like I said, it's a very comfortable e-bike. There's not a lot of adjustments, so there are a couple of sizing things to be aware of. Um, I've got the saddle here. It's kind of like a two-tiered saddle in a way. You can kind of go more forward on it than this right here is about a 32-inch step over height. Um, that kind of freezes freeze up room in the back for someone to ride along too. Or you can do what I do, which is, you know, the reach is enough that I can slide back and it's just a little bit more comfortable, a little bit easier to pedal. But that just kind of raises the uh, standover height from the 32 to about roughly 33 and a half inches of clearance. Um, it's gonna be a little bit harder for shorter riders to hop on that. I think the only hindrance beyond like the actual height of the saddle is going to be the fact that it's got this rack on the back that kind of makes it so you have to keep your leg up a little bit higher, a little bit further back. Um, to clear it fully. But I mean, again, if you are sized right, I mean, hopping on this thing is not overly difficult for me and I just really enjoy it. Let's talk about some of those things that I enjoy. So obviously this thing has comfort for days. It's a very large and plush saddle, very nice. You've got this inverted moto style uh, coil fork up front with 203 millimeters of travel, I believe. I mean, you have to bottom out on the thing, I don't think. It's just very, um, 
good at just making the roads feel a lot smoother than they actually are. And then of course you have the 210 by 50 uh, coil shock on the rear. I, I mean, overall, I mean, just every, you know, I kind of welcome the, the challenge of the bumps and you can feel a little springy at times. You kind of, you know, bounce ever so slightly, but not in a bad way. You don't lose control. It just feels comfortable and nice. So uh, kudos there on the comfort. And then of course there's the tires themselves. Uh, these big old uh, four inch wide V, I believe it's the Commander tire. Um, and it's, you know, it's got enough tread. It's designed to be your all purpose tire really. It's got enough tread to take it out on dirt trails, which we've definitely done plenty of. And, uh, but also it does a really good job here on the roads. I mean, it's a, it's a big, powerful and strong bike. So any of the extra weight from the tire, from its width, I mean, it's all offset by the motor anyway. And it just feels nice. I mean, with the weight of this bike is actually kind of a plus. I mean, it is over 100 pounds, which is not fun to lug around, obviously. But when you're out on the roads with that tire, with all of these things that just kind of come together, you just have good handling, good traction, feels nice and planted into corners, and just overall, really nice ride. Now, the motor engagement, I think this is actually something I liked a lot. When I saw, you know, it's a thousand watt, uh, when I saw it was a thousand watt motor, I thought, you know, there's a good chance it could be a little bit too fast, overwhelming, but I actually think they dialed it in really nicely. I'll give, you know, Crepton Quiet Cat on that. It rides really well. I ride around with the torque sensor and gauge, just a little bit more natural feeling. Um, well, it's good and responsive. We've kind of shown this in speed test, but, you know, if you slow down a little bit, I mean, it kicks in within like about a, a quarter or less of a uh, turn of the pedals and then just ramps you up really nicely and manageably and then of course i'm in eco mode but put it in boost and you'll absolutely take off and fly so i like that appreciate that a lot um, let's talk about a few more things back in the studio so in addition to how it felt on the paths i will give credit to the ride of the links in the dirt as well with its single speed drivetrain, it will have limitations as to what types of off-road riding you'll wanna do, and the double crown fork will limit your turning radius somewhat, so tight trails won't be its forte. But in wide open spaces on mild terrain, it handled really well, and I had a lot of fun on it. It's heavier, which means it feels well planted beneath you and into turns, but of course it's not the most nimble bike either. The suspension fork had decent stiffness to it, so I felt I could absorb a lot of the impact that you find in unpaved environments, and the tires, in addition to having solid grip into the dirt, felt nice and wide, offering me a good balance. Across all our miles of testing, we are yet to have to fix a flat on it, which is really noticeable as many other bikes we are currently testing as well seem to come back with one flat per day. So that felt like something giving kudos to the Mission Control tires for. Overall, I think the Lynx provides a comfortable and controlled ride on the roads and off, so long as you keep it in its element. Across all the bikes that I've tested from Quiet Cat, this one definitely stands out from the rest and offered a unique experience to the others that they have in their lineup. And it was a unique experience that I really enjoyed. I think the looks are razor sharp. The comfort was great, the handling was solid, and the motor was pretty good, albeit just a little lacking for a change of speed. Now the app, VPO settings, and more are nice as it showcased to me that the brand isn't content to just focus on the styling, but to think through use cases and total quality of life with the purchase. That extends to their wide array of accessory options as well, since there's a lot of ways to further set up the Lynx. Now, the Lynx was definitely a fun experience, and if our test showed it has enough of what you're looking for on the performance side of things, and you're a fan of that dirt bike aesthetic, then the Lynx is worth considering for you. That'll do it for us today. Remember to check out the written review back at our website from the link down below. And if you want to buy a Quiet Cat Lynx, there is a link for that as well that helps support our channel. And the best way to tell us thanks for our testing is by liking and subscribing so that we can keep doing what we do. I'm Griffin Hales of Electric Bike Report, and I'll see you on our next review.